So hello and welcome to another Flower Light Mystery School podcast and um, with me again of course is Christine. Hello everybody. And Charlotte. Hello. Good to be back. Yeah, good to be back. <laughs> um, so yeah, I just wanted to talk really on, you know, I've talked about it before anyway as well, but um, I suppose in a bit more detail maybe is the book of Coming Forth by Light or aka otherwise as it's known as the Book of the Dead as named by uh, Egyptologists. So a lot of people have asked me before about how you can actually get, the book of Coming Forth by Light is not in any book form anywhere, so (laughs) you won't get it as a book. Misleading to the name. Uh, Yeah, but um, the book of the dead, the other version, the more, what would you say, distorted or lower version, um, you can get in a book form, which is, um, was written by Wallace Budge. Yeah. So the Book of the Dead by Wallace Budge, you can get that, but it's it's a hard read. I'll warn you now; it's quite a hard read. <laughs> but yeah, very kind of classical language. Yeah, it's um, it's hard to, to, it's a hard read anyway. But um, so I suppose it would be good to maybe even to get it and have a look over it. I think you can get PDF actually as well. You can get it online free, I think as well. So you don't have to Great. buy it, you know. But it it give you an example of how kind of low uh, energy or consciousness if you want to say that translated this information mm-hmm. into the book of the dead do you know what I mean mm. yeah um, so it's a good example of how the information got lowered in its meaning if you know what I mean mm-hmm. yeah and it descended in some way yeah it descended that's a better word yeah it, it descended I suppose in its um, or our understanding of it maybe that are more to the point. Hmm. Yeah, like we don't have enough consciousness to interpret it. Correctly. To interpret it, yeah. Oh, okay. Because it's really based on a different language altogether mm. than what we currently kind of. Like a, it's not a verbal language, would you say? No, or... it's not verbal. No, it's like telepathic. Mm. It's yeah. a telepathic language. Um, and it's, well, it is what it's, you know, it's images. Mm-hmm. It's images. So it kind of broadcasts to the. Um, right brain. The right brain, yeah. Mm. The feminine, you know. Hmm. So, and that's why like Hollywood and all that, you know. Yeah. Um. But what was I going to say? So yeah, the book of coming forth by light is what is written on all the temple walls, all the temples collectively mm-hmm. in Egypt. Wow. Now I would say on temple walls all over the world, it's the same information that's written in temples in Mexico, temples oh, in yeah, India temples in ireland england america it's the information is the same but it was um transcribed i suppose maybe if you want to say in in slightly different ways for each different culture maybe Mm -hmm. you know yeah so the glyphs might look slightly different but they're all essentially saying the same thing. they're all essentially saying the same thing the structure might look slightly different Mm -hmm. and just an example of that would be a temple Compared to what we'd have in Ireland here, like, you know, the mounds, like New Grange. Yes. Yeah. Visually, they look very different. Yeah. And the symbols that you'd find, say, for example, in New Grange, which is probably the most well known, mm-hmm. would be like the spirals, you know, like the triple yeah, spirals. Yeah. and Yeah, the curb, the curb stones around Nelth and uh, Yeah, like exactly. Yeah. Um, so then uh, compare them to hieroglyphs. Yeah. Very different. Yeah. So that's what I mean. It, uh, this information is written on temples and sacred sites all over the world. Mm-hmm. Um, but just told in a slightly different way, as I've just described. Like the symbols are slightly different. Yeah. The structure itself, the mound as compared to a temple. But for this particular podcast, I'm talking about the temples in Egypt. Yeah. yeah. But just bear in mind that this information is in all the sites, sacred sites all over the world. Yeah. Because that is important to the grander scheme or the bigger picture if you know what I mean yeah because it's not just Egypt you know that's what I'm trying to say Egypt is like one fraction it's a, yeah of the it's, whole. A, it's a fractal of mm-hmm. the whole yeah and in a way because Egypt did actually represent in in the more ancient mind Egypt represented the earth so going the, the, oh. the phrase of going down into Egypt yeah yeah used say for example in the Bible mm-hmm. you know there's I think there's a, a part where yeah, or no, yeah. actually no. I tell you where it's from. It's from the Book of Thomas. Yeah. The Book of Thomas from, that's from the Nai Chamadi, 
Yeah, um, yeah the Notch Body text. text. And it's from the Pearl. That's where it's from. Mm. There's um, a part in the Book of Thomas that talks about the Pearl. And it, ta- it tells about the son who's been sent down into Egypt to get the Pearl. Mm. And he's been told, when you go down into Egypt, don't forget your divine heritage. And don't become intoxicated by the people. Ooh. Just get the pearl and go. So, Egypt was synonymous with many things, but in this instant, with um, physical matter. So, going down into Egypt was like saying descending into physical matter. Yeah. 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 So, Egypt almost represented the creation of the world, if you know what I mean, mm. of everything. Of all physical matter. Like a metaphysical metaphor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Easier said. <laughs> Easy for you. But, um, yeah, very good, Charlotte. So, um, Egypt was a metaphor for descending from spirit into matter. Yeah, know. yeah. So, that part from the Book of Thomas that's talking about the peril and the divine child mm-hmm. has been told by his divine parents, go down into Egypt. Don't become intoxicated by the people. Just get the pearl and go. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, the pearl <laughs> represents wisdom. Yes, yeah. yeah. So the pearl if, of wisdom, yes. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So if we translate that to go go down from spirit into matter. Yeah. Don't become intoxicated by the people. Yes. Which we can, we can understand. Oh, I think all humans can understand uh, yeah. that. But also, also like... Learn the lessons. Yeah, learn the lessons. And yeah. get out of there. As Jim Morrison said, no one here gets out alive. <laughs> Sorry, Christine. <laughs> well, no, that was just exactly it. Like, um... Basically, go go down into the physical world and don't be charmed with it. Don't believe it is what you think it is. Yeah, don't get Retrieve caught up in the drama. Retrieve the, the pearl's mm. wisdom, right? Mm. And, then, and don't forget your divine heritage yes, as well, right? Exactly. Yeah, that's yeah. The, that's the important part. Mm-hmm. But as we know, because the consciousness went so low, everybody forgot who they are. <laughs> yeah. So that's that low level of consciousness yeah. is where the Book of the Dead. Yeah. Yes. It comes in. Yeah. So it's that low level of consciousness that translated this high wisdom into the Book of the Dead. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, so anyway, um, the Book of Coming Forth by Light itself is, as I said, what's inscribed on all sacred sites all over the world. Mm-hmm. But for this particular podcast, we're going to talk about Egypt. Yeah. So Egypt is laid out in... Um, as a mirror image, if you want to say, as a mirror image of, of, of it's, uh, you know, it, based on the law of correspondence, which states as above, so below. Yes. It means it's, it's a fractal. So mm. Egypt is a fractal of what is above and what is below. Mm. So, so in other words, the macrocosm, the microcosm. Yes. Yeah. And the mesocosm. So the mm. macrocosm is the large. Yes. The microcosm is the small, mm-hmm. and the mesocosm is what's in the middle. Oh, yeah. I've never heard the mesocosm yeah. before. Yeah, and um, and to pull a thread to connect all three. Wow. Which in turn then opens the the gateway to the infinite, if you wow. know what I mean. It's like the Trinity leads yeah. to the infinity. Yes. Yeah. The Trinity leads to the infinity. Nice. <laughs> and Charlotte goes to Trinity, so there you go. I'm doing air quotes here. Because you are. I don't know. <laughs> Stop. You the can't Trini- see it, but we are doing it. The Trinity leads to the infinity. Hey. That's, um, that's merchandise. That's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There comes the um, t-shirt. So. Um, Aren't we a Trinity here? <laughs> yeah. Guys. We exactly. are, actually. Yeah, exactly. Sure. So, yeah. <laughs> so, and, and collectively, the book of Coming Forth by Light is... The, I suppose you would say it's the ancient science of ascension. Yes. Mm-hmm. Now, I probably did talk about this in other podcasts, but the difference between ascension and death is um, death is when you pass from one body mm-hmm. and you're reborn, even though you might not, a lot of people might not think that you're born into another body, but you you are born into another body. Yeah. But when you are born into that other body, you have no memory. Yeah. Of any previous life, life or or exit, it's all like new again. Yeah. You know. So that's what we would say is death. You know. Ascension is 
to leave the body, in other words, go through the transition of what we call death. Wow. But it's to come back into the same body. Mm. And But also to retain the information. All the information that was um that was gathered or that was learnt on the other side or when you were out out of body, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah. So And that's one of the reasons why they were people have the wrong interpretation of the Egyptian culture, what they've left behind, of all of the kind of science of um, preserving the body, right? Because the yeah. idea of being the ba and the ka and mm. being able to recognize your body mm-hmm. so that you can go back into it. Exactly, oh. yeah. yeah. That was the, the, the whole mummification thing, yeah. Yeah. Was an, an attempt. I mean, the mummification w- would have been in the um, later... Yeah. Dynasties, if you know what I mean. Yeah, what you're talking about when they when they knew about what, all this and remembered it. Yeah, but but the consciousness had fallen slightly, I suppose, in a way That's as it, well, yeah. because the idea of mummifying the body was to um to be able to re-enter the same body. Yeah. Mm. Um, but the higher aspect of that teaching, I suppose, would be that the body we're talking about wouldn't be the physical body. Do you know what I mean? It wouldn't right. necessarily be the physical oh. body. It is and it isn't. This is a bit complicated. It's the yeah. light body. It's the light body. Yeah. yeah. Your but, Merkaba, your light body. But the light body is the physical body mm-hmm. in a different vibration, if you know what I mean. Oh, yeah. okay. The subtle um, bodies. So, subtle bodies. Mm-hmm. Um, but, well, but, but practically, the whole idea of ascension is, you know, to put it in more simple terms, mm-hmm. that would be more easily understood. The modern way to describe an ascension would be it um it, people call it a near death experience yeah mm-hmm. but it's actually a death experience yeah yes now that's what led me personally and i suppose anyone who's listened to me before would know that that's what led me personally to um on my journey like to building right from, to the, going from to a very young yeah, age at 14 yeah from you know later on at 42 when i went to egypt to um create the mystery school yes the flower light mystery school mm. but that was all based on that motorbike accident and what happened and you know from 14 to 42 to be honest i was trying to work out i still was trying to work out what actually right. happened in that yeah. accident because mm-hmm. the pieces didn't fall into place that easy like what it was about you know yeah but on the first journey i ever had to egypt i recognized on the walls of the temples things that i had seen in my motorbike accident. Wow. In my, I suppose you'd say, death experience. Yeah. Um, and one of the most significant things for me, and probably the first thing I saw, was this this figure that was sitting in the kind of, you know, the knees up to the chest. Mm-hmm. And the arms kind of rested on the knees or wrapped around the knees. Mm-hmm. And sitting in a kind of a sphere or a bubble. Yeah. That was one of the things that hit me because that's the exact way I was sitting wow. in when I was out of my body in the motorbike accident. So there was other things as well that um, I saw the first time I went to Egypt on the temple walls that I had seen mm-hmm. in an out of body state mm-hmm. in, in the motorbike accident. Yeah. And then as time went by, because I went back and forth to Egypt a long time before I went to live and created the mystery school. But um, in the going back and forward, I saw a lot of other things. So... It's taken me a long time to realize that um, the death experience that you would have it, that would be referred to in modern times as a near death experience, mm-hmm. if understood in the right way, if which generally did people don't. Right. No. Yeah. Generally, they don't. And generally, people don't talk about it. No. Yeah. If they've had that experience because they're for fear of what other people will say. Or, of course. Yeah. There's many reasons why people bury that and they don't talk about it. I can imagine. Yeah. Um, and maybe they're afraid themselves. Yeah, it's so profound. Profound, like you'd have to be able to have like a measure for it. It's taken you years. Oh yeah. To decode it, basically. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's yeah. Great. Um. Okay. And it's as everybody goes through a different experience, I suppose. But for me, yeah. I don't think I think there is one common denominator with everybody that has a death experience is that they're never the same again after. Yeah. No. Yeah. I, think I would say right. that's the common denominator that you're yeah. not the same after. Yeah. And. Why am I talking about? Because effectively, that's what ascension is. But at 14, you know, I didn't 
No, any of that. Do you know <laughs> no, of course not. Any of that. Yeah. But so, you know, for somebody who can understand and, and if they're lucky enough to have someone that can help them understand um, a death experience that they might have had. And if they look into it on a really deeply spiritual level, what they'll realize is that that's actually ascension. Yeah. Wow. That's what ascension is. It's to die consciously, to come back into the same body and to remember what happened. That makes total sense. Yeah. Now, and that's what all the initiates were doing. That's they, what the whole mystery schools was yeah. based on. Well, I think a lot of people wouldn't know that though. Yeah, I don't think it's they not do. common information yeah. nowadays. Yeah, probably not for a no. lot of people. And the mystery schools have gotten a bad rap over the over the yes last well I don't know how long but <laughs> they have got a bad rap in especially I suppose in the more new age maybe not new age but truth truth what I'm trying to say is a lot of people say the mystery schools are bad in in terms of they're the, they're the Illuminati mm-hmm. the masons that are controlling everything you know mm-hmm. the bad bastards like <laughs> um there you go but I suppose it's true to a degree to say that the mystery schools were infiltrated. That that is true. That mm-hmm. makes perfect sense. Yeah. But at the same time, there's also the real and genuine information still there. Otherwise, the whole thing would have collapsed by now because there always has to be. Yeah. Yeah. That 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 well, brings me to the point of why does this happen? Like, why do people have these death experiences, and why were people in what we call ancient times, like ancient Egypt, um, why were they? invoking because that's what they were doing the whole mystery schools was based on invoking a death experience so that they could go out of their body Mm -hmm. effectively die but come back into the same body that's the key thing yeah the mystery yeah but all yeah and and to bring back that information Mm -hmm. you know demystify it and if you think of the ascension of jesus that's based that's the same that's exactly what happened so the whole world religion has been well i know the whole i mean manipulated christian religion Mm-hmm. has been based on that but I mean all other religions are derivatives of the same information yeah thing mm-hmm. same information yeah yeah and I think it's like um, the initiates were people who were being trained how to do this in a very methodical way mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because it was like a, it was the sacred science right Basically. it was the sacred science it yeah. was a sacred science so alchemy mm-hmm. yeah exactly alchemy and that and that was to understand what you really were but it was it was kept to what would you say the priest and priesthood priestess and priesthoods in the ancient well, times. Well, no, not back back no back in the yeah. original day of the mystery schools. This was kept. This was for everybody. That's great. There was no, um, there was nothing secret about it. Mm-hmm. There wasn't any tiered. No, like, not at all. Yeah. No, no. The, the it was the person themselves that chose to do it. Who chose how much information they received. Mm where they were at on the scale their own personal scale mm-hmm. yeah it wasn't like a class system or a you know first class second class third class kind of thing yeah it was what you what the person themselves sought out to know what you were looking for yeah if you were looking for the information you would find it, it was there yeah so there was nothing ever kept secret you mm. know that's where the infiltration came in yeah is when um people did decide to start keeping this information secret. Mm. And I understand why people associate it with Egypt because that's where it happened. Yeah. yeah. I'm not saying that's the only place it happened, but it's probably the most famous and powerful place where it happened, if you know what I mean. It happened in Ireland as well. Like, mm. but um, Oh yeah, the Druids were wiped out, right? So Yeah, so, um, and, and not just once. I mean, the, these were waves after waves after waves of getting rid of people. I mean, to be honest, it probably it still carries on. But yes. um, so in Egypt, what happened was, um, and again, I spoke about this before in another podcast as well, is that um, the connection that existed between heaven and earth and heaven and earth are a symbolic way of saying the higher dimensions and the lower dimensions. And when I'm talking about dimensions, I'm talking about I'm not don't mean something that exists outside of you. Yes. When I'm talking about dimensions, I'm talking about levels of your own consciousness and your own awareness. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So at one point in time, and that's important because it's when time, as we know, it was created, if you know what I mean. Yeah. yeah. The time, or the illusion of time. Space matrix type thing. Um, 
that connection between the physical us that's here mm -hmm. and the infinite and eternal us that is creator yeah was one mm. so we knew it so that's when in the ancient time it says in like in ancient egypt i'll go on to say about I'll tell you about the, those stories but it tells us that um it was a time like say say for example when the creation of the great pyramid and those structures took place they were told that this was when the gods walked the earth yeah. or correctly termed the neater that's how they were described the yeah. neater when the neater walked the earth now a lot of people would think that the neater or the gods and goddesses were something other than us other than humans mm -hmm. Um, but what it's actually saying is when we we were in God consciousness. Yeah. They weren't something separate to us. We were them. Yeah. Yeah. So when we were in a higher consciousness, if you like. Yeah. So, um, and you always hear about people talking about how aliens or whatever helped build the Great Pyramid and all that, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was higher technology, but it wasn't. It was from ourselves. Yeah. In a higher state. Yeah. In a higher state of consciousness. Which appears like. alien to us. Yeah, which does appear alien to us, yeah. Because mm -hmm. we're so fallen. Yeah, our consciousness from where is so that degraded, was, yeah. yeah. To be able to understand it, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's the whole ego, where the ego and the, cre the ego comes in. And all of this information, believe it or not, is embedded on the temporal walls. In the book yeah. of coming forth by light. In the book of light. coming forth by light. So... In actually, can I say it? in every temple there's a version of the same story? Okay, so all the temples that's a good question. All the temples and all the sites, and again, I'm referring to all over the world, not just right in, in Egypt, Egypt. But you're focusing on Egypt, yeah. No. But bear in mind, it relates to all the temples mm -hmm. and sites all over the world. Um, they are built on what we would say is a holographic scale or a fractal mm -hmm. scale because they encode the geometry. Mm -hmm. The blueprint of creation, how yeah. energy manifests into form. That's the information that's in the book of coming forth by light. That's yeah. um, inscribed on the walls in the form of, of what I was speaking about before, yeah. which is symbols, because symbols can encode way more information mm, than yeah. language, like than a the body written language. Yeah. One yeah. symbol can encode a library full of information. Mm. A picture's worth a thousand words. Exactly, yeah. The picture's worth <laughs> a thousand words. Goes. Because it's a higher dimensional information. It's 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 transmitted and received in a totally different way. Yeah. Than this language that we speak and write now. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, mm -hmm. I understand. Um so um it 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 brought like it's almost like um the language you use when you're dreaming. Mm. Oh yeah. When yeah. you interpret dreams. Yes. When you have a dream and there's certain things going on in that dream, that dream will make probably no sense to anybody else. But you know, you don't always know what your dreams mean, but there's I'm thinking of a time when you when you would know what certain things mean in your yeah. dream, what they're relating to. Yes. And they may not physically look like anything or do you know what I mean, but you know there's, there's this is what this means. They correlate to something. It's like you say to somebody, I had a dream about you last night, but you weren't you, you were someone else. Yes. But I knew you were you. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, 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 it's yeah. that kind of thing. And that's the way the book of Coming Forth by Light is written in these symbols. It's in a completely different way that we understand. It's The connections are made completely differently. Mm. It's above and beyond. Einstein called it spooky action at a distance. It's quantum <laughs> entanglement. It's quantum entanglement. Yes. above and beyond the 3D. Well, yeah, talking about, you're saying, talking about the higher consciousness that are, it's not separate to yourself, mm. but that when you go into a dreamlike stake, st yeah. stake, stake, stake. Uh, <laughs> that you are able to interpret, it's a completely different yeah. way to it, the way we speak and mm -hmm. act in yeah. our, I 3D. guess, 3D yeah. world that we're living in, like we're, yeah. we're speaking in now. Yeah, exactly. It's a different thing. And so... In that way, the book of coming forth by light, the information and the temple itself mm -hmm. was an interface or a mediator between the two. Yeah. Between that world of... The mesocosm, yes. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. The bit yeah. in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. So it was the gateway. Yeah. That's a good Or the word. mediator yeah. or gateway. the interface. Yeah. yeah or the portal. Mm. Um, between that realm of... Uh, energy consciousness yeah 
pure pure energy rather than pure potential pure energy before any physical manifestation mm, yeah yeah well like when you're dreaming your body is just is in bed doing nothing yeah, yeah. it's not your physical self that's moving about in your dream no yeah it's do you different. know what i mean um even though it feels very real yeah um oh yes so there's <laughs> lots of different words for that place but i don't want to be putting different names on it to be given any different connotations it's just mm-hmm. we know what we're talking about it's out of body yeah you know um and so that's what the te- that's what the role of the temple the pyramid you know all the sacred sites is the middle bit the mediator the gateway between those two places the between your like physical it. self yeah and your immortal yeah um ageless timeless create herself yeah well. yeah like uh, luxor temple is called the temple of perfected man yeah so and as you're going it's also the ascension temple of serapis bay yeah mm. it's also known as the ascension temple yeah ascension? because the ascension flame is always was there housed there by the great white brotherhood wow who the great white brotherhood and the Essenes, if you've heard of the Essenes, mm-hmm. they're pretty much they're the same people mm-hmm. the Essenes and the great white brotherhood so a scene yeah mm-hmm. so they do, they were in israel modern israel but they were in egypt mm. Mm. at that time so yeah. the book of coming forth by light as i said which mm-hmm. is described on oh you asked me sorry you asked me about the uh, each structure so oh yeah different structures in different parts of the world will tell the same information and it's all based holographically in other words the structure itself so what do i mean by that like so if an architect is creating a house they have plans Mm-hmm. And those plans involve the measurements of the size of the structure. So the height of it, the length of it, the width of it, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's in those measurements, in the form of uh, the unit of measurement and the numbers that's used to construct the site. That's partly where the information is contained. Mm-hmm. The Book of Coming Forth by Light information. Yeah. And in the symbols that are on the walls. Yeah. Um. So it's contained in two ways. It's contained in the actual standard unit of measurement and how the temple mathematically, yeah, mm-hmm. geometrically exists, or the site was mathematically geometrically constructed, mm-hmm. and the symbols that are on the walls. Yeah. So, one site can contain the entirety of the whole information. Mm-hmm. Wow. And also, a specific part of it. Relating yeah. to itself only. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, like like the hologram thing. Everything. Exactly, it's all it's all, yeah. all within it. That's what like, I was exactly. thinking. Exactly. Yeah. Fractal and hologram is yeah. so. Yeah, it's holographic, and um, so if you can imagine, Egypt is laid out to represent the mesocosm, the middle bit. Mm-hmm. Okay. So what it does is it unites the above and the below. So the above would be like the the dimensions above. But it's also when we were just in energy form before we were manifest. Mm -hmm. And the above in the physical also represents the stars above your head. Yeah. Yeah. So on all the the, the walls, as I said, are written in hieroglyphic form and pictographic form are the instructions and the um, pathway for the newly incarnated soul or the newly departed soul it's the same thing Mm -hmm. to remember that it is divine Mm -hmm. that it is it's it's like the story i told you in the book of thomas the pearl yeah it's the same thing so the book of coming forth by light contains the science of ascension Mm -hmm. so it's a reminder for the soul um that you are eternal you're not just this physical yeah. body. But it's also the map, if you want to say, mm-hmm. of the way back out again. Aha. So the way back out of what are we talking about? <laughs> so it's the way back out of what we call the time-space matrix or yeah. what we call the 3D. Yeah. Because we think this 3D is all there is. But it's not. Um, Illusion. Yeah. That's it. So, so that's why the temple was a sacred place. Mm-hmm. Because it was literally the temple. And when I say temple, I mean pyramid. I can class a pyramid as a temple. Mm-hmm. A mound as a temple. Yeah. Um, so I don't just mean your classical temple when I say, I mean a yeah. sacred site. 
they were they were classed as gateways or portals mm-hmm. um because of that very reason because they were the interface between the physical yeah and the um etheric kind of or, yeah or cosmic um, and etheric the, uh, cosmic yeah or or the energetic if you like yeah or pure consciousness you know yeah, yeah. so the mystery school initiate would start so along the nile there's seven areas along the nile it was known now there's more than seven i'm just saying um no. it, they, they would fo- okay you can follow two systems you can follow the seven seven eight mm-hmm. okay or the twelve thirteen mm-hmm. system and when i say that i'm I'm referring to you know the way you have seven or eight chakras in the body i don't mm-hmm. no, i don't mean you have only seven or eight but but the main chakras yeah. that people follow would be um the root chakra mm-hmm. the sacral chakra the solar plexus chakra the heart chakra, the throat chakra, the third eye chakra, and the crown chakra. Yeah. So they're the seven energy centers that are present, let's say, within the physical body. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, you have more than that within your physical body. There's approximately 86,000 chakras within the body. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But you also have chakras that exist above and below, above your head oh. and below your feet. Um. Now, different cultures in the world... Um, use different systems other cultures used the 12 13 chakra system Mm -hmm. and those 12 13 chakras are the ones that are still within your body Mm -hmm. yeah Um, the 13th in that system is the one that's is the portal it's the crown chakra and the same in the 7 8 the 8 is the crown chakra in the 7 Mm, 8 system so um, and if you look the the 7 the 7, 8 and the 12, 13, if you look, is based on the musical scale as well. Oh, yes, yeah, the musical I, scale. Yeah. The octave and the full chromatic scale. Yes, the 12, yeah. So, and it's also based on time. Mm-hmm. So the seven days of the week and the 12 months of the year. Yes. Yeah. It's so amazing how they all like fit into it's each great. other. It's mm-hmm. all great. connected. It's mm-hmm. all yeah, absolutely. Divine. That's yeah. why I'm, it's, there's so much information contained in... In one thing. Just one symbol, yeah. if you know what I mean. That's yeah, why I'm yeah. saying the symbols can contain more than the written language yes um and so also the seven uh, it would incorporate the light spectrum so the seven colors yes of um the rainbow Mm -hmm. if you like Mm -hmm. um so you see where i'm going why it was so what i'm doing in this podcast and in what i'm saying and in the journeys i lead in fact yeah when i bring groups to egypt the journeys i lead are um, along these seven sacred centers because in the ancient mystery schools they were known as the seven seals of the Nile mm-hmm. yeah so what are the seven seals of the Nile the seven seals of the Nile are seven areas I don't mean seven temples I mean seven areas an area could have 12 13 temples in it mm-hmm. yeah it could have like Luxor tombs it could have yeah yeah so an area incorporates a lot of different sites yeah and the areas, the seven areas, run either side of the Nile. Yeah? So there'd be sites on the east bank and sites on the west bank. Yeah. Of the Nile, in each area. So if you can visualise the River Nile running from south to north, mm-hmm. and you can imagine that starting from south, yeah? Mm-hmm. And if you can visualise seven sacred centres running all the way from south to north. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So... As I said, Egypt represented many different things, but in this instance, Egypt represents the physical body. And those seven sacred centers that run up along the Nile represent the seven chakras in the physical body. Mm -hmm. And the river Nile itself represents the spine Mm -hmm. or the Puranic tube. Yeah. Um, And those seven sacred centers also are the seven chakras of Egypt, if you like, Mm -hmm. running south to north. Yeah. Now also incorporating um, the above, in other words, um, the stars, mm-hmm. each of those temples within those seven areas. Now, I'm not going to get into that now because it's far too complicated. <laughs> but each of those temples within those seven areas are aligned to specific stars. Yeah. Um, because Egypt is also a mirror of the cosmos. Yeah. And in relation to the cosmos... The River Nile represents what we call the dark rift in the Milky Way. Yeah. Mm. And aligned on either side of the dark rift in the Milky Way are 
constellations, star constellations that run, we will say for this purpose, south to north mm-hmm. along either side of the Milky Way, yeah. of the dark rift of the Milky Way. Mm-hmm. And so the, Mil- the dark rift in the Milky Way was known as the Celestial River. Mm. Wow. Um, so if you were to look up and see the dark rift in the Milky Way and the constellations that go along either side, mm-hmm. then the River Nile and the temples that, that ran either side and the pyramids that ran either side up and down along the Nile represented those stars and those constellations. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So you can see in just the information alone how it unites the yes. physical body well, and heaven, heaven the and cosmos. Earth. Yeah, yeah. Heaven and Earth too as yeah. well. Yeah. Heaven and Earth, exactly. Yeah, yeah. The physical body but the is Earth, if you like. It's it's matter. Yeah. Yes. The physical body but, represents matter. But you're the microcosm because you represent the tiny bit of the connection to... <laughs> really, we're the microcosm, the macrocosm and the mesocosm all in one. That's it. <laughs> exactly. If you, exactly. Think about it. if you really want yeah, to go down to that level. Yeah. But if we put the stars above our head yeah. and then say the subatomic realm then in that instance we're the middle bit <laughs> the, yeah, the yeah, human yeah, yeah. is the middle bit if you yes, know yeah. Um, so yeah it's, it depends on where you are looking from it yeah. depends on your More perspective, view, your perspective. exactly mm-hmm. so so you can see how in, in that system how they laid it out yeah. that it unified the, the, the person the physical form and the cosmos yeah absolutely so in, in that instant the mystery school initiate would start um in well in actual fact they would move through all the temples in each of the seven sacred centers mm-hmm. they, they, right, they, right, they would go through all the temples yeah but I mean when I'm on the journeys I do two weeks yes. so you can't do all the temples <laughs> yes yeah. so what I do on the journeys is I pick one temple yeah, in to, each of the seven yeah, sacred yeah. sites yeah or seven sacred centers and we pick one temple so these are the ones I'm going to go through with you okay so the first temple um, that we would visit on a journey would be Edfu temple Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Edfu Temple is in the area that would represent the root chakra, um, and it's in Edfu Temple. So all the information I'm going to tell you as each temple goes mm-hmm. is all each temple and pyramid and sacred site mm-hmm. in in Egypt is and and around the world is a chapter. Yeah, in the Book of Coming Forth by Light. Wow, you could say. Each temple is a page, and each sacred center, which is is you know of the seven centers, you could say each sacred center is a chapter. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely, yeah. So you could say each temple is a page, and each sacred center, which would have a collection of different sacred sites, yeah, is a chapter. Yeah. And when you've moved through all of them, from south to north, all the way up, and the very last point, of course, is the Great Pyramid. Mm-hmm. Um, you've read the book. Yeah, you 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 have read and know the book of coming forth by light. Ascension. Ascension. Now, it, it, there's a total clue in in the title. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming forth by light, yeah. because your natural state is light. You yeah. are light. Mm. That's what we are. We are light. Absolutely. Um. And that is what all this sacred science, alchemy. Yeah. Mm. The book of coming forth by light. All the information that's written on the walls of all the sacred sites all around the world. All the sacred standard unit of measurements that were used to construct these sites. You see, they're not just any unit of measurement that's used. Mm -hmm. They're sacred geometric units of measurement that have very sacred and specific proportions to each other. Like phi and pi. Mm -hmm. Um... All those, because they're the blue, they're, they, all those sequences and ratios are literally the blueprint of creation. How consciousness creates matter. Yeah. yeah. It does it through these ratios, sequences um, and geometries Yeah. to create form and volume. In other words, matter in the physical. Mm-hmm. Because this whole premise is based on the fact that Matter is created through consciousness, not the other way around. Mm. Consciousness creates matter. Right. Yeah. So, um, so you would start in Edfu Temple, which is at the root chakra. And <clears throat> the idea of this is that the initiate is literally 
um, recreating the process of descending into into matter, um, moving up along the ladder, you know, heard of Jacob's ladder, mm-hmm. or the stairway to heaven. So mm-hmm. those seven sacred centers are is the seven rung ladder of Jacob's ladder. Wow. So the initiate moves all the way up along, starting in the root chakra, and each site will tell a different part of the information if you like Mm -hmm. and the initiate will have to go from the east bank to the west bank of the nile and that represents like the male female energy the east bank represents the female or sorry the male energy yeah because as you can you know the sun rises Mm -hmm. in the east yeah yeah yeah. so it represents the male energy and then sets in the west which represents the female energy so in each sacred and passive energy exactly active and passive yeah or the what is another way you could describe it like? Um, positive and negative. Yeah, yeah. positive and negative. Yeah. yeah. Which is the trinity if you think or about it. Po- the positive, magnetic. negative and neutral. So the initiate in this case is the neutral. Yeah. Yeah. And it's moving between the positive and the negative. Mm-hmm. The initiate is going into the temples on the east bank, mm-hmm. which is the male energy, the positive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, it's learning all the lessons it needs to learn there. Yeah. It's clearing out any blockages it has there. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, understanding all the information in, mm-hmm. in, in that level of consciousness. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because each chakra represents a level of consciousness. Yeah. Yeah. Or vibration. Exactly. Yeah. And your level of consciousness determines how you view and understand your reality. That's it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So when the initiate would understand all the information in the root chakra... Yeah. Through the feminine energy and through the masculine energy and learned all the lessons, understood the information. It could move then to, to the, the next level. Mm. And, and confronting, and finally, in each chakra, confronting, oh, confronting fears. fears of death. Absolutely. The fear oh, of yeah. death, that you have to overcome it because you can't come back remembering everything if you're afraid of dying. The fear was the <laughs> thing that was the at number the, the one. utmost uh, at every the hardest level one. was to overcome fears. So it was the initiate themselves who told themselves when they were ready to move on. Yeah. There was nobody there saying, you know, like you can't move on yet. No. No, yeah. It was the initiate themselves who knew when they were ready well, to yeah. move on. Because it's the personal thing. Yeah. Yeah, it was, as I said, the initiate that um, determined its own like evolution or when it was ready to move on. Um, there was nobody kind of uh, push, pushing one way or the other, you know, it was the initiate themselves. But... Um, the overall, I just wanted to say, the overall collection, for want of better words, of all these sacred sites around the world um, were collectively known as the net. Mm. Yes, yeah. Um, and there's a story told in, well, I'll, 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 we're going to uh, do another part to this podcast, which will be going through the seven seals of the Nile. Mm-hmm. So I'll, I'll leave that for the next part of the podcast, if you like. Um, but for now, I'm just going to say that um, in the ancient stories that were told throughout the temples, OK, we're told about how um, the home of the primeval ones that we said the story was told in Edfu Temple, of how the seven sages right. created all the structures are the mounds mm-hmm. down along the Nile. Um, and the reason they did this is because it says their previous homeland, this story is told in Edfu, Edfu Temple. And it says that the previous homeland of these primeval ones who came into Egypt in a far distant past, okay, and mm-hmm. they were the ones who created all the mounds upon which all the temples would be placed. Um, so before they came into Egypt, there was no temples or pyramids. So we're told. And these sages or seven sages or primeval ones came into Egypt and they created, first of all, what they had to do because their homeland, they weren't native to Egypt for a start. okay? because we're told that their homeland had been devastated by flood. Mm -hmm. And so they came into Egypt and they wanted to recreate what they had had in their own homeland. So apparently the center of the earth had changed we're told because the first thing that the seven sages had to do no I'm not saying there was only seven people but that's just what they were called you know or right. the or the builder gods and again this story is told in Edfu temple which is in the first chakra the first um, yeah. the first sacred center yeah. the first seal yeah um, 
so um it says that basically they came in and they had to establish a new center or where the new center of the earth was yeah so that's why they were in egypt because the new center of the earth was in egypt mm-hmm. <clears throat> and where they found where they found the new center to be uh, was Akiza. And in actual fact, what marks the exact center is the Great Pyramid. So the Great Pyramid marks the exact center of the landmass of the entire earth. So it was from there and that that the this net, okay, of mounds were established. So we're told that the seven sages or they're also known as the Shemshu Hor, yeah, the followers Shemshu. of Horus. We're told that they established or founded all these sacred mounds. So a mound like Newgrange, for example. And they established all these or founded all these mounds down along the Nile, right? Mm-hmm. And f- But they established them from the very first one at the centre of the earth, mm. which was the Great Pyramid. So they came through there? Were they... They were all referenced back to the Great Pyramid. Okay. So, in other words, um, okay, let me say it this way. Um, Every sacred site that is within this net, which exists around the whole world, encodes its location in terms of longitude and latitude away from the Great Pyramid. Mm. Mathematically. Yeah. So I'll say I'll say that again in another way. Yeah. Every site, every sacred site that's part of this net, and this net spans the whole earth. Yeah, mm-hmm. worldwide. Yeah. Um, every sacred site encodes in its standard unit of measurement. It'll encode its distance away from the Great Pyramid. Mm. Wow. It te- the site tells you itself. Yeah. Where it is in relation to the Great Pyramid on the earth. There you go. Well, wow. so that's what I'm saying. the f- The first mound that that the Shemshu Horror or the Seven Sages or the Builder Gods established was at the center of the earth, which is where the Great Pyramid is. So that was first. That was the very first. Because one. before everything all the sh- everything shifted, seals. and that was the new center of the earth. It broke apart into, and that's where they they picked the site because it was, as Antoinette said, the exact landmass, the center of the earth. Yeah. yeah. So something caused. The earth to shift, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, oh, that, that's, a, that's another that's podcast. That's another podcast. That's another podcast. That's another podcast. But that information is encoded in the Great Pyramid anyway. Yes, but, um, exactly. Mm-hmm. So, and it's also encoded in the Dendro Zodiac, where wow. you see missing um, processional time. Anyway, that's a different... <laughs> mm-hmm. um, we'll talk about that again. So More to come. It's to do with the tilt of the earth's axis as well. Yes, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yes. I think so, we might have talked about it in previous podcasts. Yeah, we probably we, we probably did. So, um, so the whole thing was collectively known as the net, yeah. Mm-hmm. And those who had the knowledge of what this net was were known as the masters of the inner net. And <laughs> when we do the next uh, podcast, which is basically the second part of this one, we'll go into that a bit more. So they were known as the masters of the inner net, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, and the internet, as I said, is, uh, as I mentioned, when you're traveling through Egypt and through the seven uh, seals of the Nile, mm-hmm. effectively, because if you remember, I said that um, the River Nile and Egypt itself represented a human being. Yes. And the River Nile was your spine or your Puranic tube mm-hmm. and the seven sacred centers was your seven chakras. Yeah. So effectively, when the initiate was moving through the seven sacred centers of Egypt they were moving through their own chakra mm. at the same time wow yeah. so what they did physically by moving through the temples they did internally as well at the same time so it's that fractal exactly. principle again the like fractal as principle above, so again. below or as within exactly as within. and that's yeah. why it was done that way yeah because what you do in the physical has a direct correspondence or effect in the in the spiritual or the energetic if you know what I mean yeah so at each step of the way they were moving up the ladder of consciousness if you like Mm -hmm. through um the root chakra the sacral chakra the solar plexus then into the heart into the throat Mm -hmm. then into the third eye and the crown chakra and then from the crown chakra that's ascension so 
effectively you're out then of the three day. Well. But the whole thing, the coming forth by light, as you can imagine, is based is the the key to coming forth by light, to ascension, to alchemy, and to all the training of the initiates in the mystery schools is the speed of light. Yeah. Okay. So all the the sacred centers like temples, pyramids, they were all you could say there were many things, but you could also say they were all centers of healing as well, if you like. Mm-hmm. And I don't mean healing like you have a broken arm and you have to heal it. I mean healing as in reconnecting pathways that had been disconnected, if you know what I mean. Mm. Like neural pathways, memory pathways, wow. all yeah. that kind of thing. Wow. And the temples were used a lot for dreaming. Yes, I was going to say that, like, because yeah. we were talking about dreams and mm-hmm. decoding that and yeah. I remember discussing before that people would go to the temples and dream. To dream, yeah. Yeah. And um, they would, there would be people there if they required it for the initiate then to go to somebody and tell them mm-hmm. their dream, what they had dreamt, and for that to be interpreted. Mm-hmm. Now, a very good uh, example of that is the story of Joseph. Ah, yes. Um, and he interprets the dream of the Pharaoh. Mm-hmm. Because the Pharaoh, remember, has a dream of seven fat cows and seven skinny cows. That's mm-hmm. right. Now, there's another good example of how the temples and the sites are connected to dreaming as well. Yeah. And that's in the dream stela that's erected between the paws of the Sphinx. Oh, that's right. Yeah. 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 Because it says there that Tutmose four fell asleep at the foot of the Sphinx and he had a dream. And in that, it, it told him that if you clear the sand from, from the Sphinx, you'll become Pharaoh. So he did. And he did. <laughs> um, it directly worked. <laughs> so there are examples of how the temples were used for dreaming. As I said, the temples were used as stargates, portals for moving right. from the physical mm-hmm. to the non-physical or the spirit realm. Yeah. If you like. I don't like to use the word spirit so much. What I mean is the consciousness, you know, the non-physical, the consciousness yeah. realm yeah. when you are a light body. Because all this training um, is about the creation of the light body. Mm. So... So could if you, explain, you think of the ascension of Jesus, yeah. you know, when Jesus was supposed to have come back, the apostles or the disciples could still see him, yeah. if you remember. And it was doubting Thomas. That's right. <laughs> now, remember the book of Thomas we spoke about earlier. Yes, yeah. mm-hmm. um, so Thomas wasn't necessarily doubting, if you know what I mean. But anyway, it's, it's doubting Thomas who says he put his hand out because he wanted to touch Jesus. There must have been something about Jesus' body. You know, after he returned from being nailed on the cross from de- from death, mm-hmm. yeah. When Jesus returned in his light body, mm-hmm. the people could see him. But when Doubt and Thomas wanted to touch him, Jesus said, "No, don't touch my body. It's not formed yet. Mm. It's not formed." Wow. So that's an that he was in his light body. Yeah, that's what I wanted to say. Could you define? For people listening that might not understand what we're talking about when we talk about the light body being, it's your energetic body, but maybe a simple definition for them. Um, I don't, I don't I'm not sure there is a simple definition. I know it's very layered and stuff, but <laughs> when I say like, often people think like they see a lot of stuff and it's like a Merkaba mm-hmm. is your light body. Or, to me, it's like the subtle body. So your Merkaba. Do you mean a visual? Like, yeah, or, or even just describe it. Like it would be like... Um, it's a it's a geometry shape, right? And and the and it doesn't stick to one shape. It can change as well into another geometry, but it's it's literally your consciousness vehicle. Yeah, and the, and the I mean, lowest it, dimension of it is your physical body. You could Does say that, that your light body has no shape at all. Yeah, that's because it's everything. Yeah, but um, a lot of people think that your light body is a specific. You see, when shape. you when you yeah, I know. That's what I mean. Well, the closest thing you could. The most accurate, I suppose, thing you could describe is the thing I described in the very beginning, which I've realized since the motorbike accident was what it was, was when I said I found myself sitting in a sphere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That would be the most... That's the most... Organic shape in the 3D for the light body would be a sphere, you know? But that's not to say that it is a sphere because it goes... You see... Okay, this is what Depends I want to say. on your consciousness. This is what I want to say. Yeah. Ascension okay. and the book of coming forth by light, which basically is, in case I haven't made it clear, <laughs> everything that's written on the temple walls in the forms of hieroglyphs and pictograms 
and in, in the parent there's not much written in the parent well there, it depends on what pyramid you go into anyway but um, mm-hmm. so the, the hieroglyphs is sacred script and basically it's all telling you the technique of ascension yes the technique of becoming light hmm. Now the question, Christine, you're asking me is what is the actual shape? Well, you see the thing is that when you become light, okay? Yeah. There is no shape, form, right. or time. Everything is everywhere now. That's what I'm just saying. You're everything. Yes. All things yes. At, and everywhere yeah. now. Exactly. So there is no one form that you can pick to no, say you know what I mean? Yeah. To say this is like, but I know that other but I'm just saying, geometries have been used as a symbol. But could it not be that before you uh, get initiated to your third eye at crown chakra, like before that shape, your light body could be a geometry shape. But then once you are initiated above the crown chakra, you're all things everywhere. Yeah. You're just light. Yeah. You could say that beneath well, the, that's what like I mean, while like, you're still in the 3D. Yes. You could use the platonic solids. Yes. Like starting with um, a sphere, mm-hmm. a cube, um, yes, sorry, a sphere, a tetrahedron, mm-hmm. a cube, um, a hexahedron, an mm-hmm. icosahedron, a yes. dodecahedron. So you could relate the seven seals mm-hmm. and move in terms of what your, your visualization. Yeah. You could say that your each consciousness level is a different geometry. Yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah, And then when you go past the... Beyond the speed of light. Yes. Then there is no shape and form. Then you're basically all things yeah. everywhere. Time ceases to exist. Yeah, there exactly. is no time. There's no space time. You're out of it. So the whole of alchemy, the whole of the yeah. creation of the light body, the whole of the Essene teachings, the Great White Brotherhood. Mm-hmm. They were called the Great White Brotherhood because they were associated with wearing white robes, and the white yeah. robe is the symbol of the body of light. Yeah, because yeah. white contains all, all colors, colors. All frequency. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the light, white yeah. light that gets broken down into the seven ray spectrum. That's yes. exactly it. And it's completely connected to that very thing. Yeah. And of course, Jesus would have been, um, which is the Christian world, I suppose, the most famous initiate. Yeah. And ascended master. Mm. And we're told in the book of Coming Forth by Light that all those who ascend become a star. Yes. Yeah. I mean, they say that very clearly. All those who ascend, ascend to become a star. Wow. So, what are the stars? But us. Are the stars like ascended beings? Mm. They're conscious. You know? They know. Very... Planets mm. are conscious. Stars well, if we're conscious. mirroring the stars on Earth, it's what a reminder that of course. we are stars. Exactly. That's it. Don't forget you're a star. That's exactly That's it. it. And... Um, the Great Pyramid itself was called Takut, yes. which means mm-hmm. the light. Mm. And that was the final place of initiation, the final initiation. It took place in the Great Pyramid. And um, that was when the initiate would um, either stay out of body, in other words, not come back. Because mm-hmm. don't forget, they had gone out and come back and gone out and come back. And um, at a, a certain stage in initiation, there's a choice as to whether you actually want to come back into the physical body, body yeah. um, or stay out altogether. And that takes place in the Great Pyramid. That's your final chance to Decide. stay in the energy realm or come back into the Conscious. physical as an ascended master. And if you choose to come back into the physical as an ascended master, you're now an ACA effective being. That's you're an it. ascended master. Um, you're fully, you fully embody the knowledge and information of your infinite and eternal nature. So there's no, you're not going to be fooled or get involved by or be manipulated by Mm -hmm. the drama of the 3D world. Yeah. Yeah. Now that therein lies the whole reason for all these initiations and Mm -hmm. for the information of the mystery schools and why it was so important because a being who has gone through this process of knowing that death is not the end of anything. And it doesn't really exist. That in death in is a transition. Yeah. That you go on. That the first thing you realize when you do what we call die is that you're not dead. Hmm. It's the first thing you realize. The first thing you do is say, uh, I'm not dead. What's going on here? 
because you're not. Yes. Your consciousness is still thinking. You're still talking to yourself. Yeah. You still have that dialogue going on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But there's this uh, disorientation because you're not attached to the physical. You're body. not in your your what you're used to, which is your physical body. Mm-hmm. Um, and therein lies why all the information was left. It's for people to study it and know what to do when they come out of their body, because that's what happens to souls who, um, you might say, get lost. Yeah. In the realms between life and death, mm-hmm. because it's disorientating. Yeah. When you are pure consciousness and you don't have a body. Yes. It can be very disorientating. So those souls often tend, they don't know where to do, where to go, you know, and they keep trying to come back into the physical. And that's where reincarnation, a continual yeah. pull back to keep reincarnating. Yeah. Because you don't actually know what to do. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> that wouldn't to happen to an initiate who... That's why the study. Yeah. And so while if you have an ascended master, the idea of controlling an ascended master through the manipulation or the fear of death mm-hmm. is impossible. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. It's impossible. If you consider the state of the world today yeah. and you consider what's controlling everybody today, mm-hmm. it's always been, but it's more prevalent now yeah. that people are being controlled through the fear of death. Now, oh, yeah. if just for example, if you could imagine for a moment that everybody knew just for just hypothesize that everybody on earth knew they were infinite, eternal, ageless, timeless, omnidimensional beings without beginning, without end. You couldn't manipulate them, could you? That's exactly it. You couldn't make them afraid of dying. Nope. So mm-hmm. how do you enslave and manipulate and control a being like that? You can't. You can't. You can't. What you can do... That's why is, that information... Yeah. Um, was protected. Was dangerous, really. Yeah. To people who wanted to control... Who wanted power yeah. or yeah. ego power. Yes. yes. And that's why people with this information and why people who achieved this goal, if you like... Yeah. Um, of ascension are dangerous to the status quo. Yes. Yeah. Because... They can't be manipulated. Yeah. The black magic that's been used doesn't work on them. Yeah. You know. So, so I'm gonna I'm gonna I think I'll leave this okay. this one here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, are you gonna ask something? I was just gonna say, would that to me, uh the biblical course and the hundred and forty four thousand souls that have to always be on earth for That's the, a good point, yeah. For the knowledge to be retained that's a very in good some point. form. Yeah. So it just means that the hundred and forty four thousand are prior initiates who very come good. back and re there is a, not a saying, but there's knowledge that there always has to be 144,000 right, yeah. souls on earth incarnated so that this knowledge is never lost. Mm-hmm. No matter That's what right. these people do, it cannot yeah. be kaputted. Absolutely. And there has to always be, yeah. as you say, um, ascended masters. Yeah. Fully remembered. Yes. They yeah. have to know they are. Yeah. As I'm, I'm told by my main guide, um, you have to know that you know. That's exactly it. Yep. Knowing and not knowing that you know is the same as not knowing at all. Absolutely. You have to know that you know. Yeah. So that there always has to be, as you said, um, a certain amount of fully remembered ascended masters in physical form. Yeah. In order that this information doesn't get completely lost. Because yeah. if it does, then all the gateways close down. Yes. Yeah. And there's no getting out of this. Yeah. And as I said, yeah. as Jim said, <laughs> no one here gets out alive. Yeah, but... but for the second part, we'll talk about the net and the grid, and and is that what we're going to talk about? That's what we're going to talk connected. about, yeah. But yeah, I just wanted to say that um, if you're attracted to this podcast, no doubt you're somebody who mm. is remembering. No doubt, Thomas has remembered. Yeah, no doubting, Thomas. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That it is you are one of the hundred forty-four thousand or more at this time because mm-hmm. of the ascension itself. We're and you know racking it's... up a lot more people remembering. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. And the hundred forty-four thousand again um, doesn't necessarily refer to Although, it, you know, it can. Um, but it doesn't necessarily refer to a number of people or an amount of people, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, 144, if you add it up quite quickly and easily, it represents nine, the number nine. Yeah. Um, and the number nine is really important. It's the key to the whole cycle. Ah, and keys are very important. Well, if you think about a circle, a circle has 360 degrees. Yeah. What's three and six? Nine. Okay. So, 180 degrees, 1 and 8. 9. 45 degrees, 4 and 5. 9. nine. 
So um, if you think in terms of the processional cycle and the division of the ages, yeah. so in the processional cycle, it's divided in 12. The whole cycle is 25,920 years. And if That's you right. add 25, 9 and 20, yeah. 2, 5, 9, 2, you'll get 9. Wow. If you add the div- each division, which is each so each age, like the age of Aquarius, the age mm-hmm. of Pisces, the age, yeah. they're 2,160 years long. Yeah. If you add 2160, you get 9. Who, um, the whole oh universe gosh. the whole universe is yeah. frequency sound because it's um mm-hmm. tonal you know mm-hmm. musical like mm-hmm. a you know yeah vibration and in a, in a, well in a like 10 it. based counting system um there is no number 10 that's it it's one and zero it's zero one two three four five six seven eight nine nine is the tenth number yeah nine is the number of completion yeah nine is the triple trinity and the octave, right? It ends on a nine and it starts a new yes. octave. A, a nine always represents in the ratio of circling the square and squaring the circle. Ah, there are the important the, ones. The square is represented by the number eight. Yep. And the circle is always represented by the number nine. So nine represents a return to spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Which um, is what this is all about. And the Great Pyramid itself. Yeah. People always say the Great Pyramid has eight faces. I say it myself. It has got eight faces. Mm-hmm. But when you... Um, consider the base. It's yeah. <laughs> and the base. So, uh, the Iniad was a sacred um, myth- mythology or encoded information in ancient Egypt. And the Iniad was a series of nine neater or gods or and goddesses. Yeah. But that nine is the number, like as in Nikola Tesla, 369. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, nine contains the three and the six. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? So it's all of that highly advanced information. Yeah. The book of coming forth by light is the most highly advanced quantum physics, quantum mechanics, you know, <laughs> um, based on things like string theory. Yes. On um, all sorts of really highly advanced Time concepts travel. like um, the double slit experiment, yep. for yeah, example, yes, yeah. which talks about the particle and the wave. Yes, consciousness and how seeing itself. Yeah, and how consciousness affects everything collapses the quantum realm exactly yes. into particle. Yeah. Um. So without a consciousness there to observe the quantum realm, the quantum realm remains in pure potential. Yes. In pure energy, mm-hmm. it doesn't collapse into physical matter. No, you it takes you... consciousness there to observe it. Yeah. To, to collapse, collapse it into, it into, into. Yeah. So yielded from that was the observer effect and the wavicle. So it's not a particle, it's not Ooh, a wave. It is both. So that's the other male, female, yeah. wave, particle. Yes. Night and day, right and left, it's the duality. Yeah, yeah. 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 So I suppose you could say as well, the book of coming forth by light is the middle path. Yes. It, it shows you how to unite those two. And, um, and to remember when you move out united. between the middle path. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Wow. And just I'll, the last thing I'll say is in the book of the dead, um, which is the, the lower distortion of this information, information. the book of Coming mm-hmm. Forth by Light. In the Book of the Dead, um, it still even contains the information which can lead you to the higher information. So I'll give you an example. There's, um, in it, they call it, it's divided in spells. So in spell 153 and 153A of the Book of the Dead, it talks about the creation of a net that reaches from earth to heaven. And that net can be used to trap souls mm-hmm. or to free souls. Wow. So the idea is you're either trapped in the net mm-hmm. or you know the net and you can Navigate use it. you can use the net. That's why they were known as masters of the net. And if you think of all the fish symbology and fishing yeah. symbology and casting the net yep. symbology yes. associated with Jesus. Yes. Jesus was a mystery school master yes so um yeshua yeah yeah that was his real name and um well i think he had many names Mm -hmm. and and really this is my opinion okay um jesus represents all mystery school initiates Mm -hmm. of the male lineage i would say yeah i agree the men in other words yeah because of course we know there was females and the females were titled mary mary spelt m-e or i that's right Mm -hmm. you know um, and that's where the name Mary, of course, comes from. Yeah. 
And why mer in French is the ocean, feminine, water. Yeah. So, yes. do you know what? Why don't we wrap it up here I and then in great. the next we'll one. Part two. What so, I'm going to do in the next one then is talk about the seven seals of the Nile. Yeah, which we've touched on today, but which yeah, we didn't really. And, on and, you know, the next one probably won't be as long because I'm just going to go through. Yeah. We'll so, go for through. example, when I uh, bring groups to Egypt and we go on the yes. path of and the Charles mystery and I school, have both been. Yeah. A few times. Yeah. Very powerful yeah. experience. Yeah. yeah. And we go through the path of the mystery school in Nisiad. So what yeah. we do is we climb that ladder. Yeah. Jacob's right. ladder, stairway to heaven. And we move through the chakras from root yeah. all the way up to crown and moving through the temples and ending in the Great Pyramid. Yeah, so, so you, you literally go to all the temples physically and Antoinette brings you all mm. through it. But that doesn't mean you're just listening. Like you will have this information oh, in yeah. your auric field. It's so all interactive. It will yeah. be, you will have... Um, what would you say activations is the word yeah well you know. that's a good point because the hieroglyphs yeah on the walls are actually activations for your light body they are mm. and without you realizing it yourself by yeah. just entering the temples yeah by entering the pyramids by mm. entering the sacred sites these symbols on the walls even though if you don't know what they mean it doesn't matter it doesn't matter no they are activating your light body they yeah. are activating the information within you yes. whether you're consciously realizing it or not oh, you no, will yeah. eventually <laughs> yeah you will it comes back to you when you does. get the activation but i find it's really interesting as watching people do it like um basically you're looking at all the hieroglyphs and the symbols and the sacred art which is all done in, in the magical proportions mm -hmm. um you will it will it will activate in you and you don't need to understand the translation or anything because no, you're you probably better it. off not understanding that's it. what i'm saying you it's energetically you need yeah. to go there. I think actually yeah. what happens to a lot of people is that trying to understand it logically yes. actually gets in their own way. Yeah, I think it's you're, probably the worst thing to do. Yeah, I think is you're to try and understand right. it logically. Yeah, like don't go down the archaeological whatever. No. Be open to the energy. Yeah. And usually on the journeys where people get most of their revelations is oddly enough, not actually in the temple while they're doing what they're doing. Um it's later on that night yeah. when yeah. they're in bed asleep and and often a lot more comes back to people it comes back to you over years after yeah. the journey even but even in the days and weeks and months after they go back home from the journey yeah that's when all the stuff starts flooding in yeah and, and it, it comes in through your dreams and through that's it times be maybe when you're meditating be because the symbols as an artist they speak directly to your right brain Mm. So they go right in your right brain and they are like a clock ticking till exactly. everything gets in place. Yeah. And then and then it's a slow release process. That's it. The yeah. information then is released. Yeah. And um, when you're in the right place at the right time, it'll just be fully activated. Yeah. Yeah. You know? yeah. And it's, it's a, to be honest, people talk about working at this, but it's not actually work. It happens naturally once you do the right yeah. thing. Once you go to the right place, be in the right. And again, you don't have to go into a temple. I mean, I've been, you don't have to go to Egypt or have to go do this journey even no yeah. you don't have to i mean ascension can take place anywhere anytime yeah yes. you know it just i think makes it more powerful it makes it, it speeds up the process i think for people who are i think that's it it's for people that are very connected to it like i always was um it's a whole nother level mm, it's a it whole definitely opens up the, it's definitely a dimension because for me one of the things that i found over the years that i've gone with you is that you really connect to the energy of the etheric temple mm-hmm which is not like you're saying the mesocosm yeah. and the mic. There well, is an energetic temple, you know, connected to the physical temple. There yes. absolutely is, and in in truth, really, you are that energetic temple. That's how yeah. why you connect to it. If you know what I mean. Yeah, exactly. Um, well, that's good to hear. I'm so so happy. it's it's almost like you're moving through yourself. Yes, exactly. Well, the, the Luxor Temple, a perfected man. Yeah. Absolutely, like that's the most beautiful, amazing temple yeah. to me. That's so my moving favorite. through all those temples, really, in Egypt mm. is as I said. And Dendera. Because they do represent the physical body on one level, it's it's you can visualize that you're actually moving through your own body. Yeah, like that movie Inner Space. Remember? Yeah, yeah, I mm. love that movie. And then at the same time, you can also because as I said, the dark rift represents the or sorry, the river Nile represents the dark rift in relation to yeah. Egypt and the sites representing the cosmos. Yes. So, at the same time as visualizing that you're moving through your own body, you can also visualize that you're star walking through the stars. Yeah. You know, through the cosmos. Oh, yeah. Especially because effectively you are doing both at the same time. Absolutely. And In Dendera Temple and to me. Yeah. Through all space and time. No, but Dendera Temple for me, the ceiling with all the astrological stuff, literally on solar boats walking through yeah. time as stars. Mm. Yeah. It's oh right in front God. of you. Yeah, it's the boat of millions of years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Across, yeah. 
right. so um yeah so we leave it there and mm-hmm. we'll uh Continue go through the yeah two? yes so keep a lookout stay tuned there's yeah. lots of amazing information mm-hmm. even more coming your way <laughs> okay bye for now <laughs> bye. bye for now oh and also wait uh happy easter i guess oh, yeah happy easter oh, been talking happy. about jesus and the ascension on the physical oh my God, plane, yeah, on I guess, the cross point. Matter. but we we better rem- remind ourselves that as we record this, we're very close to that time. Good yeah. point, good, good point, Charles, yeah. And he was the male so. initiate, so very good. Absolutely. So be did aware of the signs and symbols. No, recording? I didn't, I'm still recording. Okay, <laughs> well that's it, Because exactly. I knew what I wanted to say. <laughs> good, and Antoinette will say, you know, this is the time of year where the astrological year rebirths, it's starting again in the head Mm -hmm. and uh jesus is uh, basically reborn on the cross of matter Mm -hmm. rostow which we've definitely talked about in podcasts before so Mm -hmm. and we did but that's that's a good point charlotte yeah Mm -hmm. rostow and um rostow was the ancient name for giza Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um stauros was the greek name for the cross that jesus was crucified on Mm -hmm. and stauros and rostow if you rearrange the letters are the same Mm -hmm. exactly but i'll talk about that in the next yeah, we're getting anyway. we're getting ahead of ourselves. All right, happy, but thank you again. Happy, happy Easter. Easter and happy, happy Easter. Easter. Happy Easter. <laughs> Easter. <laughs>